it's coming along good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still in shape from the last fight, and I, I feel good. I'm ready to go. Now, you've had two UFC fights and two knockout of the night. How are you looking to eclipse that? Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to top that, but um, you know my style of fighting is, you know, I like to win by knocking my opponent out or TKO. So I'm gonna go in there and do the same thing and just try to put on a good show. Stephen Struve, as you know, is a very, very well-rounded uh, traveler and his um, ground game. He has 15 submission fights. Does that at all like help you? Like, do you want to at all like prepare for your ground game? I don't have much time to really prepare for a ground game or anything like that. You know, I do my basic training, and um, I train to get up and stay out of submissions. I don't. I'm not trying to submit nobody. My fans don't want to see me submit anybody. They want to see me uh, knock somebody out. So, you know, that's basically what I train for. And Lavar, do you think that has benefited you to take a fight on so short notice because you're already in shape, you're in fight mode, and you already peaked? Yeah, I think so. I think it's okay. I mean, I, I feel like I don't have nothing to lose. It's short notice, and uh, I could just go in there and just go all out. Um, I'm still in shape, like you said, and, you know, um, hopefully I won't be as nervous this time because the fight was just like three weeks ago, so I'm kind of used to this already, so I, I feel good. I feel comfortable. Relax. He talked about feeling comfortable, kind of getting used to this, but... I mean, it wasn't too long ago you were still in strike force. Now you got you got three fights in three months. I mean, the whirlwind of it all. Just talk about the. Uh, I mean, you're in the UFC now. Everything's happening so fast. It's almost like you don't have time to think. Have you had time to slow down and kind of think about everything? Um. Yeah. I, I've, I've been counting my money. <laughs> So, no, it, it's been great, man. I'm, I get to see all these. I'm a big fan of MMA, so I get to see all these fighters again. And um, it, it's, it's good. I, I enjoy it. Now, in 2009, you had a very serious um, wound to your shotgun shots and everything. And you've rebounded from that, coming back to where you are now. Can you tell us about that day and how you've come back and fought back from that adversity? Um, that's, that's already old. I mean, I got shot. I survived. You know, I don't think about it anymore. I just got this scar. Other than that, you know, um, you know, I just try to focus on my, my family and, and what's important to me, and that's taking care of family and putting a roof over their head, food in their stomach, and and uh, trying to just be a good man and, and do my part. Hey, Lamar, uh, both you and Stephen are finishers. Assigning percentage, um, I don't know when it'll be finished, but it will be finished. It's not going to go the distance, you know. Um, you never go the distance. No, I've never gone the distance. Um, I went to the third round one time in like 2005 and got a knockout in the third round. But uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be exciting. I think he, he uh, leaves a lot of opening to a lot of opportunity for me to capitalize on. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I feel I'm faster than him and I hit harder, so I'm going to try to get to him and uh, end this quick. Very often, Strews reach is a big advantage. You're about to one of the guys in the UFC who matches the reach. How do you think that's going to play out for you? Um, I think it's good because he doesn't really use his reach, you know. Um, I haven't seen his last couple of fights, but from what I've seen, he doesn't use his reach. He has 83-inch reach advantage. I mean, reach. I have like 81, 82, and um, I, I think I use my reach a little bit better. So I'm faster, and I think I'll beat him to the punch every time. Yeah, it's going to be a big difference. It's going to be a little bit of challenge, you know, but um, we'll see what happens. Everything everything comes together when the cage shuts and we start, that first punch goes, everything just plays out. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Pat Berry is an awesome guy, man. Um, I enjoy his company. Got to hang out with him and, and uh, you know, just hang out. I mean, this, this is a sport. I mean... We can shake each other's hand before the fight, kick each other's asses, and then, you know, we can have a beer together and, and enjoy the, each other's company. It's, it's nothing personal for me. Some guys do that, but for me, it's a, I mean, this is a way for us to make a, a living for our family, so it's just a job. Was there any hesitation in taking this fight? You're going, as as we previously mentioned, against one of the taller fighter, the tallest fighter in the UFC, coming off the shortest, from a striker to a ground fighter, so to speak. Was there any hesitation, or was it when you got the call right away, I'll take it? I'll t I, yeah, I said I'll take it right away. Um, that's my job. I'm, I'm a fighter, and that's what we do. We fight. So, I mean, I can't be afraid of anybody in the UFC, or else what, what am I doing here, you know? I'm here to fight, and that's what I'm going to do.